Busia is one of Uganda's busiest urban centers due to its proximity with a border environment. But busy as some residents may seem in the open, so are their counterparts in enclosures. Inside Jaire Guest House, there is a breakfast preparation for about 10 guests having spent their night here. The proprietor of this hotel, Molina Mandatumusime, feels blessed having received some guests after months of lockdown. The first days of the lockdown, it was a lot of manic and panic and certainty because we didn't know what is going to happen after and also like we didn't know how we are going to run the place. Um, basically today or now this is our first kind of business since the lockdown. But this is not an everyday thing. The situation is totally different from the way it was before the invasion by coronavirus. We are operating in a negative. Uh, first of all, we have to keep the security and uh, also to keep the place clean, but everything is done on negative. This necessitated the laying off of most of the hotel staff, leaving only the receptionist Nakanjako Rebecca, who counts herself lucky. I think it is like the trustworthy uh, from my boss. Uh, the love and the love of my job made me to stay at the hotel to take care. February, all our bookings were cancelled, like uh, national, international bookings. It's affected us in a way that we cannot longer run the business. The circumstances are made worse by the fact that Busia is one of the border districts still under lockdown. No public transport provider is allowed to operate within or even access the area. The lockdown that was put on the 40 districts has affected us a lot. That as I talk now, almost the hotels have closed because the customers who are coming from outside uh, Busia, majorly in the inner districts, and then from Kenya, right now we don't have any business going on. Operating in negatives, yet revenue has to be paid, is a situation that is not just confined to Busia. Kampala is Uganda's capital city that has experienced a drop in the number of both local and international tourists, just like other areas, making it a national concern. Most of the agricultural products, most of the farmers, big, small, were all supplying hotels and restaurants. We saw this during quarantine. A tray of eggs fell from 15,000 shillings to less than 4,000 shillings in some areas. So, and people were throwing away eggs. People are throwing away matoke right now. My parents are retired farmers right now. And they tell us this, so I know from a, for a fact that food right now is not being sold because there's no business in the hotels. As of 2018, the contribution of travel and tourism to GDP for Uganda was 10.1%, despite fluctuating substantially in the recent years. This is according to Noema, one of the most comprehensive sources of global decision-making data in the world. Last year, we, had, we hit one of the record numbers, 1.6 million guests came into the country. This has been growing from about a million, now we had reached 1.6, which is why tourism was doing so well that the president had given us a target of 4 million tourists by 2020. And this is something, of course, it was a bit too much, but it is something that we knew we could be able to achieve maybe over the next 10 years. Right now, we are back to zero. This is why... Ugandans need to be interested in embracing local tourism to fill the gaps that foreign tourists would have otherwise filled. The people that uh, the hotels are employing are Ugandans. We do not have uh, a contract with them to look after their lives. But as Ugandans, we feel that we need to look after them. In so doing, the country will have well prepared for the post-COVID-19 tourism and hotel industrial sectors.
we try and be prepared when finally tourism starts to grow again as it were, that we are not found wanting. As for Mori Namanda, the proprietor of Jairi Hotel in Busia, her prayer is a waiver on property tax. We know that for these almost three to four months, uh, we still have to pay the revenue when we are not working, and uh, we do have what they call property rate, and uh, we've lost it almost for four months without working, and we know we are going to pay, and basically we don't know how we are going to do it. The hotel industry employs an estimated 450,000 staff, according to Uganda Hotel Owners Association, whose membership stands at about 560. Whether the industry will stand the test of time when coronavirus is gone is a question which only time will tell. Henry Okrut, UBC.